Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now, here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Hey, welcome back to the How to Barbecue Right podcast. I'm your host, Malcolm Reed, joined by my lovely wife, Miss Southern Shell, Tyler on the board. How's everybody doing today, y'all? Great. Great. It's been uh, another fantastic fall week here. <laughs> the weather has gotten cold. It's actually, we've had two big frost. I mean, there's yeah. been. I've had to we, worry about my plants. Yeah, I had to warm up the vehicles. <laughs> that's, a, hey, that's a change there. It's been a while since I had to pre-start and let the, heat, let the defroster work. The windshields were all froze over this morning. It was. In Mississippi, I mean, I guess it is, what, November, the, what's the day? Eighth, fifth. Fifth. It's almost turkey day, Chef. <laughs> The Braves won the World Series this That's, week. Uh, you see, I'm rocking my hat. Yeah, my, my Braves visor. That, uh, I, That's been a fun series to watch with you. It was awesome. Uh, it's been 20-something years since the Braves won the World Series. And I, if you had asked me midseason when we went to Atlanta and we watched them play the Brewers for a series. We watched them lose a game. Yeah. We, <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, I would I would have told you they were probably weren't going to make the playoffs because they weren't even in first place at the time, and they turned it on ever since. So I like to think that, that we brought that luck to the Braves. We went to Atlanta, <laughs> went to a few games. It turned their season around. They went on a winning streak. They got hot in the right time, you know. Played good ball in October, and man, that was a heck of a World Series. Yeah, you watched every single game. Watched, yeah, the, the 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 series with the Dodgers and the series yeah, with the yeah. Astros were both great. The Braves, they got some they got some players on that team. I hope they keep Freeman. Man, that's what I did. You know that that's what that announcer kept saying. It might be his last at bat. Michael was getting upset. Yeah, he's like, he, <laughs> <laughs> that's a, besides like, Riley, I guess Freddie. He knew Freddie Freeman before Austin Riley. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And so he, he'd been a Braves fan ever, all, ever since he's been born. Yeah, you know? and and Riley's from a local guy. He yeah, grew he's up from around South here. Haven. That's yeah. my hometown. That's so that's you got to be a Braves fan, right? Yeah, I've been a Braves fan for years. That's all, that's all we had growing up watching was yep. the Superstation WTBS Atlanta Braves. That's all that was. About. That's the only Bobby baseball Cox, the I best ever managers remember. ever played. Ever ever, ever managed in my book. Chipper Jones. I go back to the Dale Murphy days. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know who that <laughs> is. <laughs> that's. A I long watched time. it when Chipper was uh, playing. Yeah, yeah. Back in like he was good too. They had some awesome uh, teams with he was on there. Yeah. They should have won way more uh, World Series championships. I felt like back in the nineties because they had. I mean, they were the team of the nineties, but they were. You know, you get to the, you would get to all the way to the World Series, and somebody put them out. Game so, six was great, though. Oh, like, it was. It was just a great game of baseball. Yeah, yeah. A lot of them were. We saw several grand slams. Yep. We saw them hit a grand slam the night they lost when we were yeah, watching. First them inning, that well, first yeah. inning grand slam. Yeah. I actually, <laughs> I went against, I, I went against the Braves and bet on the Astros that <laughs> night. I just had a feeling. <laughs> I, I had told I had told Michael I was like, look, they're going to get one in Houston, and then it's going to go to Atlanta. And they're going to get two in Atlanta, and then they're going to go back and they're going to get Game Six. That's what I told him was going to happen. And so after they come out and they you know they won the they won the first one in Houston, then they got two when they got to Atlanta in that third game. I was like, Game Five, oh they're going to they're not going to win this one. Then they hit that Grand Slam. I, I, mean, I didn't bet a lot on them. I put like a hundred bucks on the Astros. And, uh, but did you feel dirty? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I felt bad collecting that ticket. <laughs> I did. I did feel bad. I on bet on. One. I bet on the Braves. Yeah. I didn't bet on them balls. anymore. I was yeah. like, I'm not betting on them because I didn't want to jinx them after that. Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but you lost. So. Yeah, I lost. That was the only one I think I lost. Yeah, you. Had so a great this past weekend, weekend we t- for our anniversary we went sports bet. I took shell sports for real gambling. nice <laughs> to the casino. <laughs> It was fun. Oh, Did you yeah. have a great anniversary? Oh, I have a Where else did you I mean, you've got you know, great spent hotel two nights. We don't have I, to leave. There's yeah. plenty of restaurants to eat at. The food was great. We had Asian food. We had bar food. We had all kinds of great stuff. Oh, no. I had a blast. I, had wouldn't, I didn't watch some complain. Sports. We watched some Sunday football, Sunday night football. Monday night. Baseball. Baseball we football. Some Monday night game. Yeah, the Monday night game let me down. Yeah, it wasn't that good. That was going to be where I was going to make some money. I was like, oh, man, I'm, I'm going to. I, was, I, I mean, I did okay. I was only down like 90 bucks after Sunday betting. But then Monday come around, it's like, all right, I know it was a big spread. I figured Mahomes and the Chiefs had something to prove. I was like, it's the Giants. <laughs> the spread was 10 and a half points. I was like, there's yeah. no way. 
And so I took like, I had the Chiefs. I had, I had, I did have Daniel Jones throwing interception. I felt like he was going to throw an interception. I won that bet. That was like a little prop bet. But then I had the Chiefs, and I had them at the halftime. I had the Chiefs. It was just bad all the way around. Oh man, yeah, it was bad all the way around. It was bad football. Yeah, I'm not betting on the Chiefs anymore. <laughs> uh, uh, I did I pretty know. well. I don't know. I, honestly, I don't know what I'm doing betting football. I'll be the first to tell you. It's easy. I just kind of that's what you say. Just go with whatever, easy. whatever team color, whatever mascot <laughs> looks good to you. Is that how you do it? <laughs> Gambling's easy. Gambling's so easy. Sports gambling. I, I do bad at the tables. Yeah, I didn't play any tables. I play. I did put some money in a slot and won like eighty bucks. You did. Just walking by, he said, I think I'm going to put some in that one. Because I had, like, a voucher for, like, five bucks or something. We won $85. Yeah, yeah. We're big gamblers. <laughs> big gamblers. <laughs> to me, it's fun, you know? It makes the game a little more interesting when you I haven't play got it. one. I had one of the cards, and I lost it. You know how you get your little player's card? Where I could even get <laughs> You lost it. your player's card. <laughs> yeah. I was putting it in the – I like – see, I like the, the casino sports books because they have these kiosks everywhere. And you just go up to the kiosk and you can pick your bets and look through all the lines, different sports, whatever. And but you put your player's card in there, I guess, to get points or whatever. Yeah. Well, I'd done it a few times, and then I guess I left it one time. I was like, I wasn't going all the way back across the casino to go stand in line again to get them to reprint me another card. So I don't have any points. Uh, no comps for me. We, we're not really comp type people. We don't gamble enough. We do it yeah. once a year. Yeah, <laughs> but it's fun. I do enjoy it. Oh yeah. What casino did y'all go to? It was uh, the Beau Rivage in oh. Biloxi, and it was it was super nice. I'd recommend somebody going to mm-hmm. the Beau Rivage. They have a, a real cool minor league ballpark. Who did they say they're affiliated with? The Brewers? Was it Milwaukee Brewers? I think, I think so. so. so we, we asked the bellman that took us up to our hotel room. Does that sound was, right? I don't but, know. yeah, it was an awesome-looking ballpark. That'd be fun. It to had a, uh, a minor, I love going to minor league ballpark. Me game. too. Oh, I think I've seen that they're, before. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's like a breakfast place across the street. I think we were eating there, and I think I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty cool part. It looked cool from our hotel room. There wasn't nothing going on there. But I like uh, going and watching baseball games live anyway. It's so much more convenient yeah. than football games. or Football games are better. We've talked about this Man, before. How better crazy at the do house. you think it was at the battery? Was today the day, or was it yesterday or the day they were having their Yesterday they was had the parade. Man, I bet you there were so many people there. I heard that like, you couldn't even get tickets. It sold out. to go. I guess they sold tickets to go. To the back. parade? Yeah. Oh, really? They're How much still, for tickets? I bet they're still smoking cigars and popping <laughs> <laughs> Um, So we didn't talk about it last week because we had uh, Brad Barrett from Grill Greats on the podcast. Yeah. Um, But we had a soup contest. We did. A few. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to call it that. When did we have the soup contest? It was last week, right? Right before we left out of town. Yes. Yeah, yeah it was Thursday, that Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. Why don't you compete, Tyler? He's just, doing social. He's taking pictures. <laughs> stuff. I got like, cause I, I just got too ambitious. I got stressed because I was like, I was gonna put my soup in a bread bowl in these little, uh, the little bowls that we were serving in. So I was gonna have to make the bread fresh. I was gonna have to make the soup. I was gonna have to wow, prep. I was gonna bring. It. I was gonna bring a torch and melt cheese on. Like it was like. So I was like, I, that's too much. So I was like, I got to take pictures and stuff. I'm just not. Gonna. I did way too much too. I came in dead last. <laughs> And that's what I was scared of. <laughs> I'm not scared to finish dead last, but I made one of the best she crab soups that you could possibly eat. It was some people really liked your soup. It was uh, it was amazing. Austin said he loved it. It was amazing. You got to like crab. I yeah. mean, I put a hundred dollars. Uh, I don't even know why I did it. There was like but, we put up a hundred dollars in bragging rights, and I spent. I spent a hundred dollars just on the crab meat to go in it, so I wouldn't even broke even. <laughs> not including the cream, and yeah, the not, shrimp, not and everything the, else. Yeah. The stock, the shrimp stock I made, and yeah, and 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 then people said, "Oh, it tastes too seafoody." It's I'm so, well, it's crab. It's supposed to taste like a crab. You know what? Pretty much. You know how I should have just went go. creamy cheesy taco soup. Yes. <laughs> That's what you gotta do. I you gotta know. give the people what they are used to. Mac and cheese soup or something like that. If I used a block of Velveeta in it, it probably would have did better. Yeah. I was trying to do a nacho cheese soup first, actually. Yeah. That'd, like, that'd do it pretty good. Been good. I should just go get white cheese dip from La Siesta. <laughs> heat it up. Heat it up, put some chicken in it and a little broth or something. You There's probably would have gotten first place. I would have. I got I, second. And chicken and dump your chicken and dumplings were the bomb. So though. good. Yeah. Uh so I don't know how I will say this. How how most people make chicken and dumplings, but your chicken and dumplings are better than any I ever have. Well, you got to make your broth. 
So it starts with the whole roaster chicken. You've got to make your own stock. To me, you put like to make giblets right. and all that in there. Everything: celery, onions, like the whole tur- whole chicken, all the all, all the innards, the neck. You boil it all. Boil it all, and then you strain it, and then you reduce it, and then you you pick all that out, or does that stay in the? Oh, okay. No, I strain it. So you pull your chicken out after you. I pull everything out. I strain it really stock. well, where it's just the liquid. Then you reduce it. And then you reduce that even several more hours, right? Uh, I wouldn't say several more hours, but an hour. Concentrate the flavors. Concentrate the flavors. Then you add your cream, your butter, your dumplings, your chicken. <laughs> you go back and you, you pick that chicken? Yeah, pick that And add that, chicken. that meat back? But it goes in at the very last minute. I don't know. Whatever. Like you, the last 10 minutes, just to heat the chicken. It's buttery. It's rich. It's, we'll say this. That's, that's some food for the soul it right is. there. It's better than chicken soup could ever be. I normally just buy, you know, the box regular butter, salted butter to yeah, put it in my like chicken. Kroger oven. brand. Yeah, but I was gonna get fancy and use the butter that y'all use have been using in ribs. Yeah, the Kerry Gold. Kerry Gold. It's an Irish butter. It's real, real creamy. Bright real yellow. rich. Bright <laughs> yeah. yellow yeah, yellow. Um it didn't incorporate like regular butter does. It almost kinda like set on the top a little bit. Really? Yeah. What do so you think I wouldn't that was? I don't know. It was good. I know yeah. that. It was so rich. You couldn't eat a whole lot of it. Man, it was good chicken and dumplings. Uh, I can Jamie? Go for some of that, right? That was the weather was still warm right last week. This week was soup week. <laughs> we, we should, I, I should do a redo on that one. I call it redo. <laughs> Jamie like, won first place with a chicken tortilla soup. It, he called it taco soup or something. Yeah, yeah. Three or four different names. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> he don't know he what know. he made. Yeah. <laughs> he looked up two or three recipes and just combined them into one. It was good taco soup. I ain't going to lie. It was mm-hmm. good. Was it better than she crab soup? No. <laughs> the the uh, judges say differently. Judges different. I was so scared for you because I'm bringing the soup out and they were all like, what is this? And I was like, it's uh, she crab soup. And they were like, oh, no. Yeah, it's like they knew going in. I don't know what to eat that. I don't know what <laughs> you know, she crab is. You know if I would have said lobster or something, they probably were shrimp. I don't know. Put their fancy bibs on. Yeah. People are afraid of what they don't know. That's, they, I guarantee those judges never had she crab soup. Probably not. Next time we're gonna you gotta you gotta work to your crowd. Uh, I did not work to the crowd. <laughs> I told you that multiple times. I don't know about she crab soup now. Well, yeah. You should have slapped me and said, Look. <laughs> you told me I don't know what you I'm gotta doing. make beef stew or something. <laughs> that <laughs> Brunswick noodle. stew we had was good too. Yeah, yeah, I, I like made Brunswick, Brunswick stew. Man, it was really good. So what's up next? Dessert? Um Mount, the last place gets to pick. Yeah, and I said dessert. Mark had a good idea though. He said we should have done like Thanksgiving or Christmas sides. The hmm. best sides, but I don't know. So I said I got dessert you there too. just because <laughs> I want to eat dessert. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait, just I'm going. Like, if we do dessert, I'm keeping it real. It's gonna be, it's gonna be something classic. It ain't gonna be out the park. Uh, it's gonna be just classic and good. Yeah. Um, Jamie won. He uh, used some tortillas that he cut into triangles and fried himself as his like a garnish and strips. Yeah. yeah, and they were really really good. Do you remember the the time we did that and used it in a entry? Yeah, World Food. It was, a, uh, was that two years ago? You know, World Food's happening right now. That's why I brought in it Texas. up. I did it for, we we had to do oyster as part of our structured build when we did the seafood category at mm-hmm. World Foods. So instead of doing, like I did char-grilled oysters, but instead of serving them with like a cracker or something that, you know, you traditionally eat oysters with, I used those same tortilla strips, or not strips. I took tortillas, quartered them. It was small, like straight. Yeah, straight taco tortillas, but they were flour. Them and then fried those because it was like a. I was doing like a take on a southwestern oyster on the half ship. Yeah. So we did shrimp and like grande gringo, poached some shrimp, seasoned it, put butter, and we made like a real fresh, almost avocado guacamole kind of. Mm-hmm. That was where those strips went. So you were supposed to get the oyster out, put it on the tortilla, get your shrimp. Oh man, it was it was really good. I thought it was really good. A picture of it come up. Is that what you made you think of it? Picture yeah, and it then I up? realized that the World Food Championship was going on this yeah. weekend. I saw that picture. I was like, man, that looks good. You said, hey. That's ours. That's our picture. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, it's not. And I said, yeah, it is. That's our dish right there. That was pretty cool. <laughs> it was good. I love those fried tortillas. Like when you fry them yourself, they take on like the flavor of the oil. So whatever oil you're frying yeah. them in, they kind of get that so flavor. So I like to use peanut oil. Yeah. And then season them as soon as they come out and they get like, brown and crispy and 
It's almost like but they a, have a chew to them too. They're crispy, yeah, but they have a chew. Way better than a corn tortilla chip. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. So World Food Championships is going on this weekend. We've done it a few times. Yeah. Do you wish you were there? Uh, I love the World Food I'm Championship. I'm not hate missing it. It's <laughs> deer season. It's cold. Yeah, now. I don't want to travel, but I, if they would have had that like in March, if they would, I know I would have been. I will say this: if it was back. Down in Orange Beach. I think it is. No, it's in Dallas. Oh, it is? Yeah. It's in Dallas? If it was back on the beach, I would go back because that's the best time of year to go down to Orange Beach. And I would give up punting this weekend to go down to World Foods if it was on the beach. But, I mean, I've been to Texas a bunch. It's, don't get me wrong, Dallas is fun, but it can. Um, I can do without it. Do you, I mean, do you enjoy the actual contest side of it? Um, yeah, it's fun. Because it's basically like Chopped. If you've ever seen Chopped on a yeah, kinda. food network, I mean, you got, it's kind of. You got a you don't, team you get, but you, say get you get you get to Yeah, you get to bring all your stuff you're going to cook, so it's not like you're cooking in a blind. You can actually practice the recipes. You can have a game plan going in. Um, but, I, you know, that, that style of cooking is fun, having that little kitchen area. I love it. Yeah. It's one of my it's one of my favorite. Do, what do you prefer, that style of competition cooking or barbecue contest? Oh, I like barbecue way better. Yeah, that sounds kind of weird that it works like that. Yeah, you get a little spot. It's I mean, they like have all different categories, area. so it's more. It's not about barbecue. They incorporated barbecue into it several years back, but it's more about. Um, they have it's kitchen. It's more about kitchen cooking. They have a seafood. Yeah. And it's not contest. really. It's not supposed to be chefy. It's supposed to be like people in their homes. Yeah, hmm. but it ends up being a bunch of like so a lot of the categories are actually restaurateurs or chefs or something like that end up getting in it. It's not like an amateur event. I mean, yeah. it could be for anybody, but an amateur can get in it. But you typically have to buy your, or win your way yeah, into it. Yeah, you have to win some kind of preliminary contest or something that they've done to get your way in. Yeah. Is that what Riley Wright was talking about when she was on the podcast that she was? Probably. Mm, was she going to cook in it? Uh, yeah, she uh, got in. Yeah, I want to say yeah. she got in, yeah. Because yeah. they were debating on what category to enter her in. Yeah. Don't go seafood. <laughs> Don't go seafood. That's the one where all the chefs are in it. Go yeah. burger. Go burger. Go sandwich. Soup. Chili. Yeah. yeah. So Chicken. they have a bunch of different categories, and you know those categories kind of go head to head with bacon each other. Bacon was one. one year. Yeah, bacon yeah. was one. But you get a little area about the size of this table, and it's got uh, an oven, a grill, a prep a area, a microwave, a mixer. Yeah. You know, a few mm -hmm. basic things, and you bring everything else you need. Yeah, you yeah. bring everything you need, and. They say go, and you got like a minute, an hour, hour? And a half, or something like yeah. that. Yeah, it's a clock countdown. You usually have to do two, two, two platters most yeah. of the time, isn't it? One display pat platter, and then sample. Yeah, but they have like a structured build, and they have your own recipe. Oh yeah, we that's did two right. things. That's well, right. That's really cool. Yeah, it was. It was a lot of fun. The first year that you cooked in it, it was just a steak contest. The first round. Yeah. And we were hoping you wouldn't make the top five because <laughs> we were trying to make it home to yeah. see, uh, watch Michael's play. That's right. We didn't get to because I made it. You made it. And then we had to. I won. Did the... I win that first round? Uh, You were in the top five, I know. Yeah. Me and Wayla both were. Yeah. And then he made yep. the second round. Jamie and Jay helped us cook. Jay, uh, Mojo, yep. Yep. Tennessee Mojo. They helped us in the kitchen and, and Mark and Emily helped Waylon. Yep. And then Waylon made it the next year. Yeah, him and Mark. I helped did. him, and I helped Mark the next year. Do you remember? They what? actually could have got back in, and I think yeah, they would have they qualified could've. because they finaled the the last time they had. It. I don't think they had it last year. Either. This is the first one since we yeah. went. You got second place in the final round. You were this close, like a tenth of a point. Oh yeah, from, from winning the from winning that, yeah. the whole thing. Man, that's crazy, ain't it? Yeah. And moving on to the final, final, the final round. Yeah, then that would have been a shot at winning 100000 Yeah. Do you remember what you cooked for that uh, first pro final round um, that you did? Was it was it steak. steak. You had to do a steak, yeah. Did it have to be ribeyes? I don't remember. Yeah, I remember because you cut the spinalis and everything off and just did the full remember? Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. And we did some kind of potato dish yes. and probably asparagus with the sauce or something. You did a mushroom reduction sauce. And then you poached, yeah. did some butter poached shrimp, too, yep, yep, on top. Yep, to that was your it. dish. 
Man, that's been so long ago. <laughs> it was 2018. <laughs> it seems like a long time ago. And then 2019. Was when we did seafood. Is when we went to Dallas yep. and did seafood. That's right. Yep. Wow. You, you did barbecue shrimp and grits and then the char-grilled oysters. I was trying to remember what my other dish was. It was a shrimp. Man, those shrimp and grits were good, too. Yeah. I don't know if I've made shrimp and grits since then. <laughs> <laughs> We, uh, because we practiced and practiced and practiced on these grits. We were trying to find the like, perfect. I'm sick of making grits. Yeah, the perfect <laughs> brand of grit, the yeah. perfect style of grit, how to get it just the right texture. <laughs> we cooked so much grit. I know. I just kept, kept cooking grits. <laughs> what brand is y'all's favorite? It was the Mill House or something. Yeah, it ended up not being like a fancy one. Like we so, like special ordered some. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, we had the stone ground, like custom cut grits and. It was just that one that's got the little meal house on it. It comes in like a blue and red package. Wow. They had the best flavor and texture. Yeah. Um, we talked about doing a chop contest in the office. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. Like make a little commissary and that's everybody had to pull from those ingredients and we drew for teams. Like be have it'd be two two per, two people teams. I, I just, don't know. That's still under. We we gotta we gotta have a bigger kitchen. We gotta yeah. build a bigger kitchen. Yeah. We don't have the room. We don't have the setup for it. If everybody had to do it on like just a little propane stop. <laughs> I don't want a team. I want to do it all uh, by myself. Oh, you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. She don't want to be dragged down by none of these folks. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't work well with others. I want to judge. <laughs> that's what I want to do. You're done I, with the. I don't want to organize. I don't want to compete. I just want to judge. Try some of this stuff. Give it some fair scores. You're the only judge. You're the decider. <laughs> no, I don't have to be the only one. <laughs> well, this week. A drink contest would have been good, too. That would have been a good one. We did do. the margarita contest. Yeah, yeah um, that was fun. I liked that. Yeah. I thought an appetizer contest would be good, too. Oh, that would be a good one. Like for yeah. the holidays. Holiday appetizers. I don't know what I'd do for that. There's all You can go all kinds of ways. You can do anything. Dips. Balls. Stuffed cheese. <laughs> stuffed stuff <of> cheese. <laughs> you could do all that. So this week you released a turkey video. Is it too early I to did. start thinking about turkey? No, it's never too early. In fact, <laughs> you probably, I, early. in fact, I'd go ahead and go buy my turkey. And our grocery stores, they finally had plenty. I picked up, I've got one in the freezer. I picked up another one Got I already put it in the refrigerator. Because <laughs> I'm doing another turkey video for TikTok. I hadn't done one of those yet. The one that we just released um, was kind of a take on a classic, but I called it butter herb basted turkey. It was just a butter turkey. Yeah, a butter turkey. That's all it was. I brined it, so I, I bought it. Let's see. That was when you couldn't find any, so I had to order it from Costco. It was like a $100 turkey <laughs> because nobody else had turkeys, and I wanted to shoot that video. I knew I had like one week to do it. I needed time to get it. It was froze. I had to let it slow thaw in the fridge. We didn't I've have any other have, options. I've got to yeah. buy this turkey. I bought it in October. You know, I, we were going to Georgia, I think, and so when we ordered it, and it was here. We got back and let it thaw out, and I brined it for two days using the bird brine. That's all it was: water and the bird brine. There ain't nothing wrong with that bird brine. Man, it makes it juicy. Yeah, and you get flavor down deep in the meat, but you got to give it time. That's what brining is all about. You can't say, "Oh, I'm gonna brine something for a big, a big piece of meat for just a few hours." It don't do any good. You might as well inject it. It's the only way you're going to get some, some flavor down in it. But if you've got 24 to 48 hours, man, soaking it's the way to go. Because it just equalizes. It, everything comes to equilibrium. The salt, the sugar in there, the flavor from the herb, it kind of makes its own little briny tea. and All that gets in the meat. And so you get that flavor and you get that juice deep inside. Like when I cut it in, this was a big turkey I cooked. It was bigger than I normally do. Cause yeah. I, and they only had like. To a size range, it was like 15 to 18 pounds. Well, the one I have was like 17.86. So it's a monster turkey. It would have fed a bunch of people, too. I mean, like when we broke it down, we had two big bags of meat. That would yeah. have fed a lot of people. But I got it in that brine, and I kind of cheat when I brine. I don't want to have to put it outside on a cooler and ice or anything. So I got one of these brining buckets, which is just like a souped-up five-gallon bucket. Brian gave you that last yeah, year. Yeah, he did. Brian Weston gave it to me. <clears throat> And uh, took one of our meat bags and put that down in the bucket to keep everything inside and then put the turkey down in it. And it's so much easier because it don't take near as much water to get everything That's covered. True. Yeah. So I took like the, the whole, for a big bird like that, I used a whole bottle of bird. You, you need 
probably two cups of seasoning. You know, what if salt, you're doing a little sugar, turkey? That, well, half a bottle of a cup's yeah. worth would be enough, and yeah. one gallon of water. But I use probably it's probably a gallon and a half to, to fully submerge it. But I used one whole bottle of the bird brine, kind of whisked that into one gallon, poured it in there, added just enough water to where when I closed the bag up, there was no air in it, and the, the turkey's completely submerged. And if you do that, like if you just stick it in a bowl or a cooler or something like that, that turkey wants to float around. You're not, you know. You've zip tied it before. Yeah, I've zip tied them before. You could do that too. But it, having them in that bag makes all the difference in the world. Closing that bag up. And then you, if you wanted to stick it in a cooler, you could set that whole bucket down in a big cooler. But if you'll just move your shelf up in a refrigerator, you can slide that bucket right in the refrigerator. There's no mess. You already have it moved up to fit. You know, cases of beer <laughs> yeah, that was your beer, beer trailer yeah. yeah it was perfect two days never opened it for two days just let it sit in there you don't have to worry about checking on it that brine bucket's got a little screw down it's not a weight it's just like a spacer and that's what it's you meant you can for. notch it down even you can, more yeah it's got birds. little levels if you got just want to put chickens in there or whatever you want to put in that bucket you can set that little i guess it's a, a holder a bird holder downer <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> what would you call it? it was, I mean, it's like a spacer. It's a not nothing. a lid because it still has a lid, too, that you put on it. It's a real thin piece of plastic, but the way yeah. the brine bucket. It's grooved. Bucket, yeah, it's, it's grooved, grooved. where you lock, you can turn it and then push it down to the next level and twist it back, and it just pushes whatever down in there. You could do it with a brick if you want to put a brick <laughs> in there, but that makes it so much easier. But then you just forget about it in there for two days, and you don't have to worry about a mess. It's not going to spill out. You know, when you get through with it, you can go to the sink, lift the turkey out, let it drain real good, and then kind of rinse it off, get everything off of it, and then take that bag and pour it down your sink or whatever and throw it away, and the bucket's really clean. Yeah. I mean, we washed it, but it's still pretty clean. Um, That was the brine process, so that's 48 hours. Now, the cooking well, process was easy. I have a question. Every year somebody asks us, can I brine a bird that is already packed in a solution? Oh, yeah. I always do. Yeah. I don't I mean – all they did was inject some salt water in them. And I don't know how much flavor that's giving you. They call them I don't, People enhanced. are worried it's going to be too salty. It's not. So Brian's not going to get it too salty. Have you ever had a turkey that was too salty? I've never, <laughs> had, well, I've never had one that's too salty. <laughs> Most of the time I'm like. Yeah, but see that Brian's going to go to equilibrium. So it's going to get the same ratio of water and salt and sugar inside the liquid as is in the bar. That's what it wants to do. It wants to go from high concentration to low concentration. I don't understand all the science. I just know that's what they told me how it works <laughs> when I took biology class. It makes sense. And it makes sense. That's what it goes. So it's not going to get too salty. And even that enhanced bird, they say they put so much enhanced solution in it, but if you ever taste it, it's still plain. And it don't have much flavor at all. Turkey is super neutral. It's even more neutral than chicken. To I me. agree. It's just plain tasting. So you need those flavors in it. And I've even brined and injected. So why didn't, I didn't do it this time, and I probably, I don't know, going back, if I did a butter turkey again, I'd, I'd do a triple butter turkey. <laughs> I'd do the butter Cajun butter injection in it because it, it couldn't be bad. I mean, the meat was juicy and it had plenty of flavor, but could it have stood some more butter in there? Yeah, yeah. always. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it would have been bad, but I just didn't. Yeah. I mean, I was like, that's another step. You know, I wanted to cook one this way. This was kind of a traditional, really, you know, I, I kept the flavor simple. So after I got it out of that brine – and kind of, you know, patted it dry. Um, make sure there's nothing, the herbs and stuff stuck to it that's in the brine or whatever, peppercorns. I kind of get all that out. Stick a bunch of pepper towel in the cavity because that's the last thing to dry out because water just wants to pull in there. I put it on a rack over a baking pan and let it sit in the refrigerator overnight. That dries the skin. I guess the air moving from your refrigerator kind of makes that skin dry out a little bit and all that moisture has gone from it. Now you could just... Do the best you can with paper yeah. towel. Get and it we've done that can. before. But you'll get way better skin if you'll let it air dry. And I do this with my chicken wings, whole chickens, whatever. Give them a little time in the fridge. And you don't have to go overnight. Bigger bird probably help to go you know, more hours. But at least two hours will do the, it'll do the trick. You'll I've, start getting that skin dried out. See, I found, and I've only done it with like whole chickens and chicken wings, not turkeys, but I've found that overnight really makes a difference. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. The um, skin wants to brown up and get crispy on the smoker. And that's hard to do. But if you do it that way and let it air dry, it's going to help. And so once that was done, it was time to get it ready for the for the pit. And I, I cooked this on my Traeger pellet grill. So wait. Which I think a pellet grill cooks smokes a turkey as good as anything. 
You get beautiful skin. You get the right airflow moving in it. It gets brown on you. It gets almost crispy on you, and it's easy. So that's why that's why I use my tracker. And you turkeys. don't want a lot of smoke on. No, it. you don't want it overly smoked. I mean, I've I've done smokers on like I've done like my stick burner. Or a drum, or you know, a different type of pit. You put it on actually, an egg too. Yeah, egg. Though it's it's those turkeys want to get dark on you quick. I guess it's the wood, the real hard smoke. The pellet grill is not going to do that. It's going to kind of get brown, and it'll get, it'll darken up, but it's not going to get overly dark on on a pellet grill. And that's and that's one reason why I like it. Too. So you're talking about what's the time frame from buying the turkey to putting it on the pit? Shoot. How much time do you need to give yourself? So it's going to take four or five days to thaw and then two days to brine. So that's that messes up that's a week. A week. <laughs> and then overnight, I'm cooking it on that seventh day. Seventh day, we're turkey. But you're putting it overnight and letting it air dry. Yeah. Okay. On the end of the yeah. sixth night. So if you're saying yeah. you pull it out, day four or five, and then go two days into brine, that's, you know, five, six is the way I'm looking at yeah. it. Yeah. And you're it's cooking. It's drying that sixth night. And on that seventh day, it's ready to. So you need a week. Yeah, give yourself a solid, smooth week. See, I'll need to go get a turkey. <laughs> yeah. Yep, that's right. Go get your turkeys now. Or get them this weekend because you got, what, two more weekends? That's right. Mm-hmm. Won't be long. So once you get it ready to season, you got to get something in that cavity. Now, I don't put stuffing or dressing or anything. I've done it, and you can. I did it on a video. I don't know if it was last year or the year before. It was just to prove a point that you could do it. But I, I mean, I guess that's a lot of people's way that they grew up their grandma doing it. I like my dressing or stuff and cook separate. Now, what what you do need in there is something to take up the mass to help it cook more even. That's what filling that cavity is doing. So if you did it with stuffing, that's what fine. If, what if you didn't stuff and just left it open? Is it so take it longer to cook, or the the dark meat might dry out, or the okay. white meat will dry out before that dark meat ever gets done? Just making it one more, you know, a solid, a solid mass, piece, having yeah. something in there helps it. And it gives you some flavor. It gives you a way to get some flavor on the inside there as those vegetables and stuff cook. And that's what I put in there. Root vegetables, aromatics, citrus, stick of butter. I mean, how can that not be good in a cavity? And that's what I did. I quartered up an onion, sli- you know, sliced, uh, wedged up some lemon, some celery. I did one of the little uh, poultry bundles of herbs you can buy at the supermarket. It's like sage, thyme, rosemary. Cram that up in there. Took a whole stick of butter, put it up in there with it too, and then crossed the legs and tied them up with butcher twine, hold everything in. You did um, some cloves of gar- cloves of garlic, garlic cloves too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you can put whatever you wanted, really. Yeah. And you like to use the green leafy celery parts too. I do. I use the center cut that you don't normally eat. That everybody, you know, everybody wants the big outer ribs of celery to dip in their blue cheese and ranch. Yeah, I like the leafy stuff to make my yeah. chicken stocks too. Right, well, you can yeah. put carrots in there. You can put you can put pretty much anything. You can put apples. I put apples in the cavities before. You can put a lot of stuff. Now, if you do do stuff, and just know that you've got to cook that to at least at least one sixty five. You're talking about the stuffing. food safety. If you did stuffing that you planned on eating, that's because you got to think you got all the juices of that bird cooking out and getting in your stuffing, and you don't want to get anybody sick. That's one reason why I don't. I usually don't mess with trying to cook any stuffing in there either, because I don't. If somebody's going to get sick on something, it's because somebody undercooked that, and I'm not going to. I'm I'm probably not going to eat it. So. I'm going to eat mine on the side with some gravy and slices of <laughs> turkey on top of it. But once you got the cavity stuff and you got the legs crossed and tied up, it's time to do the skin. So I melted a stick of another stick of butter. And I've used it. You're going to see a butter, butter trend in this one. Melted some butter and brushed it all over the skin. That kind of got me that foundation, that glue to hold my seasonings on. Now for the seasonings on this one, I kept it simple. I used equal parts kosher salt and granulated garlic. And then I added some poultry herbs. So I used like one, uh, half a cup of salt, half a cup of granulated garlic, and like a tablespoon of, I, of ground poultry seed. I do not think that is the recipe you gave me at all. I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is. I bet it's dead close. I might have said two tablespoons. I don't know. I think, I I think you said two tablespoons. I think I said one. Let's go look. I am. Check me on that. Right Fact now. check me. <laughs> um. <laughs> The, the uh, main half a cup of kosher salt, half a cup of granulated garlic, one tablespoon Look of poultry that. seasoning. I told you, that's what I did. That's a man because uh, me and Mark Lambert went went up to a. It was a class, the business class that Mike Mills was doing. Business of barbecue, yeah, business of barbecue years ago, and they were it was it was around holiday time, 
and they were doing turkeys and stuff. And he was like, man, this is the best thing I've ever put on turkeys. He said, I said, what is it? I said, you putting your rug, your magic dust on it? No, no, man. It's simple. It's salt, garlic, and we put a little poultry herb in it, and that's it. So I was like, well, dang, I'm going to try it. And so we started selling turkeys like fundraising. And that's, you know, that was the seasoning that we used. And I thought it was great. And I was uh, selling hundreds of turkeys for fundraising. Oh, it sucks. <laughs> It is the it's worst not the, It's not the cooking the yeah. turkeys. It's the getting them, the thawing them, the getting them to the pit, and then making sure people can pick them up. It's uh, In the time, yeah. Yeah. But you it put those on? Four or five hours to cook. It don't take them long. Is that your rotisserie you throw it on? Yeah. yeah we put it on a rotisserie. Man. But so, hundreds of so turkeys. Let's we go back to thaw. cooking this turkey. Okay. Now. I've oh. done got the skin, melted butter, brushed. <laughs> what everywhere. happened to the butter when we were brushing oh, on the turkey? Oh, yeah. It's cold outside. That's so when it started <laughs> congealing back up. <laughs> And it looked, I was like, oh, this don't look that good. It's like I just covered it in fat. Huh? <laughs> but I was like, well, it's butter. It's going to melt. And it's going to make it golden brown. It so I seasoned it really, really a hard dose of that, the salt and the garlic and the poultry seasoning. And you would say, man, that's too much. It was not too it much. It was not too much. It was not too much. But what that does, that salt helps pull moisture out of that skin. As the fat under its rendering, it's turning that skin, that golden, the butter's helping it turn golden brown because it's got that fat on it. The salt's pulling moisture out. It's causing it to just crisp up. And once you put that on the grill, man, it starts looking beautiful. It really does. It's a pretty, pretty turkey. It looks like the one that you would, you know, everybody's got that envision of their grandma opening mm-hmm. up in the oven and basting with the big bulb baster and putting the juices on it and all that. I like the um, herby flex that get on the skin, you know, yeah, so that's, as you're basting and stuff. So, so after a, about an hour, it's time to start basting it. He just goes on the pit. I, I left it on the little raised rack because that makes it easy to spin around because you want to baste it evenly. And you want to spin that turkey as it cooks to make sure it's cooking evenly on the grill. Um, and so I took two more sticks of butter. So I'm a, I'm a pound butter in in this recipe. <laughs> Four sticks total. Now I melted two sticks of butter, and I took some dehydrated herbs at this point. I used parsley. I used rosemary, and I used thyme. Mixed about a tablespoon of those in, the two sticks of butter. I might have said one stick of the recipe was two. I did two. No, you said two. All right. Well, that got melted. I just I zapped it in the microwave, put it in a little Pyrex, you know, mixing cup. That's glass, your go-to. But pop it in the microwave, melt the butter with the herbs in there. It's ready to baste. And then at about an hour when that turkey starts browning, and I'm not rubbing the skin. I'm dipping it down in that baste and catching some of the herbs and just kind of close drizzling all over it. Could you use that butt basting bulb mm, as, in that application? It blasted too much. This is just about you're kinda, not catching it underneath. Yeah, as, you're just kind of you sprinkling yeah. it. You just want to kind of drizzle that melted butter and the herbs all over. And that's what you're talking about. Those flakes of herbs kind of stick to the skin, mm-hmm. and it just gives it a really, really pretty look. And I did it over the wings, over the legs, over the bread, over every bit of the skin. And it starts get building this golden brown, crispy skin on the outside of that turkey, and that the butter helps doing that. So I do that about every forty five minutes to an hour while it's cooking. Um, at about two hours in, I start watching the internal temp because I mean, you could have put the probe in when you first started, but it's so cold. Uh, I want it to be you know already come up some, so I probe it in the breast. Usually, there's already a hole there where one of them pop up thermometers has been, and those things are garbage. Just take that out and throw it away. You can't trust. Do you them. really think people use that? <laughs> My granny did. <laughs> She's like the. She red didn't have no other thermometer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that popped up two hours ago. We still cooking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I guess there's. I don't know what they're set at. I, that'd be a good. What? At least pop up the, the pop up. <laughs> really, pop up. Yeah. Happen? What temperature does it? That'd be a good control to see. I'm gonna have to. You can just drop it. And you can just get some water hot and you know right there on the eye, with and watch it with a the thermo pen and then drop it in there and see where it pops. Give me your pen. You gonna do that? I'm gonna research where, it. Where that thing pops yeah. up. But that's the hole. I usually go back in there so I don't puncture a new hole in the skin. And I'll use my Thermworks dot. I set it to 165. I make sure I go in the thick part of the breast and away from any bone. And then you just watch it. Keep basting it. Now, what'll happen, like I always try to like trust the legs, tie them up so they're kind of together. Cause if you didn't, they'd splay out and the legs would cook fast. The wings I always kind of tuck them back behind the turkey's head or you know on his back where it looks like his arms are folded you know back behind him like he's sunbathing and they'll uh, the edges of them can start getting dark too so i take a little foil and just kind of protect them because that's like when i get the skin right this the right 
brownness or, you know, the look that I'm looking for, that's when I want to protect it. It's not done, but I don't want it to get overly dark. So you can just lose use foil. And I do it over the top of the turkey too. Once I get that last baste in and it's starting to cr- climb up and temp, I'll go ahead and lay some foil over the top of it. I don't wrap it. It's just to shield it so it don't turn any darker. And I just cook it till it's 165, take it off and let it rest. At that point, you're done. But – is is the um, tinfoil a requirement, or is it just No, like... it's kind of by look. Like, it don't have to have it all the time, but I always have some on standby because you don't want it to – you don't want it to get too dark. I mean, a big thing about turkey is we only cook them once a year, so it's presentation. You know, that's the one yeah. you think the dad's bringing this big turkey on a platter out to the table, and he's going to stand up, give a little speech, get his oh, – yeah. the only time you'd use that big fork thing yeah. <laughs> and the knife and, you know – you're fixing to go to work on it? That's a butte, Clark. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? Save the neck for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, that's so it's about presentation. So, you know, you brought out your turkey platter, and, mm-hmm. I, you know, I, since it's on that rack, it was easy for me to take it over the cutting board and move it over to the platter and let it cool a little bit while it was doing that. I threw – I just picked up a bag of fresh cranberries from the produce section and – had some more rosemary and just throw that on the platter, kind of give that it a little garnish. That made a garnish. big difference, Makes like in the pop. appearance. Like um, when you, if you're trying to do that to impress somebody, you don't have to go out crazy, but just a little bit of cranberry and rosemary will make your turkey pop like that. Uh, Matt, Meat Church, he just used some sage leaves, and it looked really good, too. Oh, yeah, you can use anything. It's That's, really easy. Yeah. Do that if you're wanting presentation. Yeah, and it'll look good when you go to the table with it. Yeah. I suggest doing that and then cooking your turkey breast over on the side. So. Yeah, just have that <laughs> one to show. Cook butter the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> That's your show turkey. It's good. You know, I like I love smoked turkey. Now, I like smoked turkey better than oven roasted, way better than oven roasted. Oh, yeah. Better than deep fried. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, it's the, the pellet smoked turkey or just smoked turkey in general tastes so much better. The dark meat's good on it. Like most turkey, oven roasted turkey, that dark meat, I'm not eating for nothing. It just it's not good. But the deep fried, it's okay. But most people with deep fried turkey, they overcook it. Mm-hmm. It's just it's so always overcooked. gets dry. Like the yeah, skin's super usually dry. good, but usually the pot's not big enough for the turkey they're putting it in. The legs are sticking up out of the oil. I mean, <laughs> yeah. for real. I mean, that's, and so I mean, I've, we fried a bunch of them in my day. And they're okay, but they're not. When I, once I started smoking turkeys, that changed my turkey game. I'm like the man on Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Man, he brought smoked turkey, and it'll always. I don't care if you go if you take a turkey somewhere. In fact, do that. Like if you go into your relatives or to a Thanksgiving get together, just work. Somebody in a else whole is new doing. Turkey. You bring in the smoke. Like let let whoever's doing turkey do their turkey. Then you show up with one you smoked and drove thirty minutes with it. Like smoke it up to the time, like thirty minutes for you going to even drive it over there, and then bust it out and then carve it up. Man, I guarantee you that whole smoked turkey just be carcass. That other one will still be sitting there, it dry will be. as it was when they put it out. <laughs> That's just how it rolls. I didn't like turkey and ham, really. Like holiday turkey, holiday yeah. ham. And I'm sure it's because my relatives overcooked the crap out of it. But until I met you and you started doing hams and turkeys, now one, I don't it's a think whole different, it's a whole different ball game. I don't think people like most of them don't don't have proper thermometers and knowing how to check for doneness yeah. in a turkey. Yeah. I mean, that's a game changer. Just having that little cheap dot that's got the probe. And if you were cooking it in the oven, you can stick that dot in there and it'll tell you when it's done. Have you ever pulled if you're doing it in a deep fryer? You can put that probe in the deep fryer and take it out when that turkey. Don't go by the, oh, it's five minutes a pound. Try to do math and figure out if your oil's the right temp and all that. Watch that internal on it. Have you ever taken it off before, like at 160? Um, yeah, I have. And it'll come up a little bit. Yeah. And that, you know, that's, it'll make sure it's real juicy that way. It'll carry over about five degrees. That's fine. So it'd be safe to do yeah, that. Yeah, you can yeah. be safe too. Usually, Even on a big turkey? Um, you know, if, if I had my picks of choice, I would always cook them 10 to 12 pounds because they cook even. I know I can take it to 160. It's going to carry over. The dark meat's going to be perfect. It's just a good size young turkey to cook. Once they get over that 15, you know, they get up 16, 17, 18, even bigger pounds. There's more room for error because you're getting bigger pieces of meat done at different times. So normally, like if I was gonna, if I was if telling somebody to cook a big turkey like that, it'd be better to spatchcock it, and that way you can get it cooked more precisely and get it juicy. It's just easier to cook. 
Now, I did that one because that's what I had, and I had this butter-roasted herb turkey in mind when I did it, so I used the big one. But it worked out It really worked out good. great. It was a delicious turkey. But if I would have had my really choice, I would have picked one that was 12 pounds. And that's what I got. I found a 12-pounder at Walmart. It was a butter ball. It's already been enhanced and all that, but I'm going to cook it. I'm still going to – this one I'm going to do Cajun style for TikTok, so it'll probably – I'll do it, you know, inject it. Probably use what, you know, like you can buy – you know, TikTok's about easy stuff. So, yeah. so you can go get a butter ball. You inject it with this Cajun injection. You season it with simple Cajun seasoning. Smoke it's a, it. It's a never fail Cajun turkey. No brine on this one. Or are you going to brine it? No, I'm not going to brine it. If you're just going to inject. Yeah, I'm just going to inject it. It's going to be a, all right, Tyler. You ready to go film TikTok? I've already <laughs> got it in the refrigerator thawing. It's been in there almost a day. What about yesterday afternoon? So yeah, yeah. I got three or four more days. We're going to be shooting a turkey video. <laughs> Did you see um, Jay Tennessee Mojo did a turkey wing? Yeah, I, I talked to him about that. <laughs> Where were we at? That wedding? Yeah, we were at the wedding. Brian's wedding down there in Mobile. He was like, man, I'm going to do turkey wings. I was like, oh, that's a great idea. Did you watch the video? They look really, watched really, really, really they good. They look good. Yeah, he did a cranberry sauce. Yeah, that's what that's what I was like. He's like, man, I don't know what to do with them. I was gonna do, he was going to do his peanut butter and jelly wings like he did with turkey. I mm-hmm. said, man, it's Thanksgiving. Y'all you know, come up with a cranberry sauce. I bet cranberry Because I think some of that, you know, he likes using that, um, it's one of those spicy honeys. Yeah. I forget which, which brand it is. Bees little, Knees. Is it the Bees Knees? Yeah, that's one he I likes. was like, man, that would be good with like a cranberry, like, like take a cranberry. I would have, I don't know how he did a cranberry sauce, but I was thinking, take the can, the old jelly looking can of Ocean <laughs> Spray yeah, or whatever, yeah. your cranberry sauce, put that in a pot, splash of cranberry juice, turn it to a syrup. Then add, you know, add some of that spicy honey to it, and then you could, you know, you could make a wing sauce out of that. Really, yeah, I bet it'd be good. I bet it would be. Yeah, one of your football, you should do turkey wings. <laughs> turkey one wings, football one, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the Thanksgiving. Oh, that is the Thanksgiving wings. one, man. That would be a good one to do there. I might have to remember that. You didn't do a wing recipe edition. this week. No, uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> since we were on our anniversary, it was actually the first was our anniversary. Yeah, that was yeah. that Monday. I didn't do a recipe because I was. At a sports book. <laughs> but we ordered wings and we took a picture of them with the Miller Lite. <laughs> they were the dang good should, wings. The way you should celebrate your anniversary. Yeah, that's the way you should do it. Do some of your favorite things. You Hanging out with your baby. <laughs> Romancing her at the sports book. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to strangers. <laughs> uh, so I got a question for you. It, I've been getting a lot of questions emailed to me. Okay, that's good. I like answering questions. Um, so should we have like a, if you have questions to ask Yeah, Malcolm? send them to Southern Trail. No, send them to Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what's, what's, are these Thanksgiving questions? Cause we're going to do, we, we've talked about it, Tyler. Did we get that set up? Oh yeah. Can we talk about that real yeah, quick? Yeah. Yeah. So coming up, is it going to be on a Wednesday? I think, I think yes. it's the 17th. Is that the right day? Yeah, it's going to be a week there, before but... Thanksgiving. On Wednesday, yeah, Wednesday night, it's going to yep. be turkey talking live on Facebook. Yeah, <laughs> who'll answer? Any, we're going to do. We'll probably take about an hour, hour and a half, however long it takes. Mm-hmm. It's going to be my version of the Butterball Call In Hotline. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> where we going to do it on Facebook? <laughs> yeah, uh, right now Facebook for sure, and it is uh, Wednesday, November seventeenth, okay. six p.m. Central. Put that on your calendars if y'all want to. Hear and some Mark's going to join you, so y'all have two perspectives, yeah. two versions. You know, yeah, we're going to just be fielding questions on talking turkeys. Yeah. So if you have any questions about cooking your turkey, put yeah. Wednesday, November seventeenth in your calendar, calendar. And, and watch the uh, work. What, watch <clears throat> the Facebook page, How to Barbecue Right Facebook page. Yeah, it'll send. Uh, if you already follow us, it'll send you out a notification an hour before and when it goes live. So make sure you guys are following over there. Um, if nothing goes wrong. Nothing goes wrong. I'm gonna make y'all a turkey for that. I think. And Are you really? You're yeah, gonna make yeah, it. Yeah, y'all gonna y'all get to try Critique my turkey. It? Like yeah. you're gonna smoke a whole turkey. Yeah, you're gonna oh, smoke okay. it. I think that's a good okay. idea. Yeah. Heck yeah. Let's tell Tyler what he did wrong. <laughs> Are you going to stuff it with stuffing? Or <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't do that. I like, I'm, I'm a stovetop advocate. Like oh, I just, really? Stovetop stuffing, yes, sir. You know, I like stovetop, too. Like, I like, <laughs> you know, the traditional like, cornbread dressing. Like potatoes. <laughs> I love instant potatoes. Man. How'd you grow up? <laughs> My mom made it homemade, too, sometimes. So yeah. I like that, too. But I just, I like stovetop. I'm a cornbread man. dressing, man. That's what I grew up eating. I didn't My mom would just make top. it on like a Tuesday sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you get what? We're having chicken and dressing. Oh, it was, really? It was just in the rotation. Yeah. It didn't I, have to be Thanksgiving for dressing. Now, my mom doesn't really like turkey. 
So she still to this day, when she does Thanksgiving, she makes chicken and dressing to go with mm-hmm. turkey. Yeah. She don't make turkey and dressing. And it's good. Oh, it's, it's the best. I never had stovetop till I went to college and I live with Sarah. Yeah. And she turned me on to stovetop and we would have like stovetop for dinner. Like we'd that split a, a box. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's it. <laughs> we'd like no meat split to a go box. with it? Would you put meat in it? <laughs> no, no. You just split a box of stovetop for dinner. Because you could do like, <laughs> that would be an so interesting TikTok video. It'd be like. If if you don't if if you're balling on a budget, go get your rotisserie chicken, <laughs> boxes stoved up, make you a little dressing, pop it in the oven. Heck yeah, how to doctor up stove hey, doctor top. Doctor up yeah. stove top. Fancy up stove top. That's not a bad idea. That's a good TikTok, actually. Heck yeah. Got two boxes of stove top and rotisserie chicken. With and then your- saute some veg to go in it and soup it up, make a little gravy. How how would you would you do a cranberry sauce like from cranberries? Oh, you could, yeah. Or like, would you? I, mean, I love take the fresh cranberry sauce. Yeah, it's so much better than the can. Yeah, and it's easy too. So easy. Cook them till they pop. That's it. We should do it like a balling on your, uh, excuse me, balling on a budget series, like yeah. a whole series of just yeah, yeah. yeah. Balling on a budget. How to take a fancy like filet mignon like a on a budget? Hand. Yeah. Fancy up mac and cheese. <laughs> Plays a can <laughs> I want to try that. Have you ever had a can and ham? Uh-uh. I, I don't think I have either. My dad loves it. Really? <laughs> Just loves Is it very Like spammy? the oval looking when it's yeah. kind of big? Yeah, loves it. It buys it. Like he won't buy any deli meat for sandwiches. Like he'll just buy the can. And, and then slice it up yeah. for sandwiches? How yeah. is it? Is it salty as hell? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's what I can imagine. That's pretty, not, pretty close to spam. Like, yeah, that's what I'm name. expecting. It's not spiced like, like spam. That's no. the difference. It comes in like a congealed kind of jelly at the bottom. Oh, God. Yeah. That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> it's like vein of sausages. It, it's like snot or something. <laughs> it's just, oh, man. I won't get regular vein of sausages because of that. Like the hot and spicy ones don't do it. I guess they have enough hot sauce in that like can the vinegar. To, to dilute the gel. <laughs> but if I've got to take it out and sling it, then it's like, Put oh, that on a man. cracker with some mayonnaise. No. Oh. <laughs> God. Fear factor. Yeah, that is fear factor. Would you rather? <laughs> Eat the old slime off some baby sausages? Or, I don't know. Hit yourself with a hammer. I'd probably take the hammer. <laughs> Would you rather uh, eat one of those Pocky chips again or uh, eat, eat some vinous <laughs> sauces? Oh, man. Jelly. <laughs> that, that I thought all that hot one stuff was hot. If y'all hadn't tried that Pocky one chip thing, man, that thing would kill you. I can't do it. I did a little corner of it thinking I was going to be cool in front of Michael. <laughs> man, I paid, man, I paid dearly for that. And I know better. He took a bite, too. Yeah. I walked hurting. in, and y'all were just like, it won't quit burning. It won't quit burning. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I was just up doing circles in the kitchen. Try- I couldn't drink enough water. We didn't have no milk. I had a tub of whipped cream cheese, and me and Michael were putting spoons and just tried to hold it in your mouth and spit it out and try to ease it. It would not stop. My eyes were watering. My nose was dripping. I couldn't sit still. <laughs> that thing's deadly. I don't even know why that – and it tastes like horrible just – Bitterness, I don't even know, yeah. earthy, yeah. and it was it was not good. Like, why somebody would want to make that, I don't know. Did you know there's one spicier than that, like, that they sell? There's one spicier than yeah. that one? <laughs> oh, no. I saw it online the other day, and I was like, no. Because <laughs> no y'all way. tried, like, we took that one chip and made a bunch of little tasting samples with it, didn't we? Yep. Mark yeah. tried it, you, Austin. Hey, Michael threw that one away. We did, because we couldn't. Yeah, yeah. I don't see how anybody could eat the whole thing. So, have to wreck your so to answer your question, I think it's the ham and mayonnaise. <laughs> yeah. Slime yeah. off the vaina with the mayonnaise. Slime off the vaina. I couldn't get that down. Mayonnaise on a on a on a saltine. Saltine cracker. That's all it was on it? Like you took <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And you, you can't mix the mayonnaise and the No. You, <laughs> you gotta can't. have it. You're getting horrible now. That's <laughs> it's trying to make me sick. <laughs> all right. So how about this question for you? Uh, this question comes from Jim. He um, has questions about his pellet smoker. It's not a name brand. It's all he could afford. I figured there's a lot of people who, yeah. you know, get balling on a budget pellet grill. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, you don't the, even know if you like them. Why spend a lot of money if you don't know if you like them? That's a good tr- good point. <laughs> Dogs just watch them. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is that the controller fluctuates. It does not hold a constant temp. And yours seems to. Is there any other controller that he could buy and install on an even embers grill that does not cost more than the smoker? He only paid two fifty for the smoker. Um, 
and he's looking for, is, is there something out there? Can you install a new controller? Best thing to do is get you some black electrical tape <laughs> and put it right over that number. <laughs> and don't worry about it, because that's what pellet grills are designed to do. Now, they have some of the fancier ones. They put different controllers to where they'll try to make that swing not so wide because people get hung up. On I got it set on two fifty and it's and it's going it's thirty degrees over up. and thirty under. Well, that's what a pellet grill is supposed to do. It's made to swing. Like when it's dropping pellets, it's dropping enough in that fire pot where they burn up, and it's telling it to stop because that's producing all the heat. So it's not going to tell it to drop more until that burns down and the thermometer, the thermostat in it realizes that there's a drop in fluctuation, and then it ramps back up and dumps a bunch more. And so it's constant ups and downs and ups and downs. And you want that. That's where you get your smoke on that, on those pellets kind of burning down. And then I'm on them burning back up. And when it's dropping those pellets and they're freshly going and creating more smoke, you want that flavor. So if the grand scheme of things over a cook, you're not even going to notice it when you got it set on 225 or 250 or whatever. And you know, it's, it should take you six to eight hours, depending on what you're cooking or whatever. Over that time, that up and down, up and down, it's not. It's going to even itself out. Um, so does a higher so it don't end matter. pellet grill still create the fluctuations? Um, or does they've it got them dialed in. Well, they've got these new controllers. So that was the old style controller, and I like those controllers that swing. The new ones, they kind of control it more to where they don't swing as much, and I guess they're more accurate to keep those temperatures right where it's supposed to be. But does that mean it cooks any better? No. I don't know if you get as good a flavor on the ones that stay closer to her to temp because you don't have that burn and smoke and smolder and all that as much. So and is that why you I like, prefer it? I like the old school one, yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I don't get caught up on temp. Even on my, I mean, if you watch my pit, any dial pit that we have, it's just an old school screw-on dial. I mean, you might think that it's staying 275, but it's really, there's ups. And if you watched it yep. across that cooker, there's a from reaction end to time. end. There's yeah. Re- yeah, there's ups and downs, and that's just part of cooking, and that's cooking by feel. So really just know that it's not exactly – even your oven at home, it's not the exact same temperature in there. I mean, you just got to know know your hot spots, figure it out, and kind of figure out what, what your times and your roundabout. Because those old school pits that used to come out, those first pellet grills, they just had a smoke or high. You know, there was, there was <laughs> yeah. no number on them. So people couldn't complain about it. So I think I, th- I think people overreact. So my answer is, don't worry about swapping it unless your controller is just not working. I wouldn't even worry about don't it. Worry I just roll. You just kind of know the rate of pellets you got in there, kind of what it does about those temps. If you really want to get more precise about it, put you a run one of those ThermalWorks air probes through the door and set it outside and watch what the air is doing at different places in there on your cooking grate. You get a better accurate reading. So embrace the swing. Yeah, that's what uh, Gorilla Grills always said that. Embrace the was swing. Was it trust the swing? Trust it? the swing or? Yeah. <clears throat> I think that's what they say. Embrace, trust, whatever. Go with it. Just ride it out. Just it's drink no, a you beer. Don't, it don't have to, yeah, it don't have to be precise to cook barbecue. Yeah. Like you said, your oven's not precise. Yeah, it's not precise. You think it is. But no. Because I can turn my oven off and then be like, oh, I, you know, I need to turn it right back on. And within that two minutes, you know, that temperature hasn't changed that much yeah. inside that oven, but it's given me a completely different reading. That's right. And it, and it depends on where it's reading. Because, yeah. I mean, it's going to be hotter down close to the element. Yep. As you get away from it, there's different temperature ranges. It's an idea, temp, you know. So all, you, Not all ovens cook the same either. I mean, I know my mom says her oven cooks hot. <laughs> or my our oven cooks, you know, slow or whatever. Because yeah. there's different spots. Up towards the door, it's a little... It's a little hotter up to the door. I have to rotate the pan sometime to get my stuff to cook even. Heck yeah, I do. So, so I mean, you've got to learn your oven. you got to learn any of your yep. equipment, any of your huh? Equipment. Yep. Um, so what are you cooking this weekend? Man, I've got, I put together a big old pot of bonafide chili last night. That's going with me to deer camp. Uh, tonight we're going to, I'm going to put it in the crock pot and warm it back up. And then tomorrow it's going to be steak and taters. Got to get up and cook breakfast at some point tomorrow after we, we go hunting. And we'll probably come back and cook breakfast. It's going to be deer, smoked sausage, and biscuits, and probably some eggs on a black stone. And then, then yeah, baked taters and ribeye steaks. I might cook them on a fire pit. I don't know. Ooh. I need to remember to take a set of grill grates with me. Don't let me forget. 
Okay. <laughs> I need some beer grapes from my fire pit. It's my new fire pit that I got at Bucky's. <laughs> <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> it's a cool fire pit. You can Heck cook yeah. over it. And, um, you got a heck of a chili seasoning. <laughs> man, it makes it's, it's, it's a bona fide, man. It is. If y'all ain't tried the bona fide chili season, you're slipping because it makes a good pot of chili. I made a pot of chili uh, two weeks ago. You want me to tell you my my easy, simple bona fide chili? It's the easiest chili in the world. Is it the one I was fixing to tell? It could be. You wanna, yeah. yeah okay. No, go ahead. You, did, you, you make it too. You need two pounds of ground beef and one pound of ground pork sausage. The breakfast kind. It could be Jimmy Dean. It could be Tennessee Pride. It could be homemade. You can you could use the sausage seasoning to make you a pound of sausage and put in it. But you need three pounds of meat. Then you need an onion and a bell pepper chopped up. And if you want to cheat, like I did this time, just buy the frozen ones. <laughs> I do that all the time. Yeah. So I brown the meat up in a skillet, season it with a little AP, throw the vegetables in there. Get them cooking, get them all that flavor. They're going to cook out some moisture. I drain all the juice and fat off that meat and onions. And it takes it, what, five, ten minutes to brown the meat and then get the onion, onions and peppers going. Then I add in two big heaping tablespoons. It's probably it's probably close to a quarter cup, yeah. but I just do it by heaping tablespoons. I know how to do it. It's probably like four leveled off tablespoons, but that's the, the chill, bona fide chili seasoning. Then I go two cans of crushed tomatoes or tomato sauce, two cans of petite dice, one can of Rotel tomatoes. That's all that goes in it. I put, I did doctor it with just a little bit of sugar. I put like a tablespoon, put a tablespoon, of, a tablespoon of, sugar. of sugar yeah, and a few dashes of Worcestershire sauce. Stir it all up, let it simmer down, let the juice come up, keep it stirring. And then I do some beans in my chili and I buy the, like the chili hot, I don't know what it's called, it's just bushes two kinds chili of beans. beans. It's, it's like a but it's chili like mix. A, yeah, it's like two kinds of beans. It's like a red bean and a black bean in it or whatever, a kidney, dark kidney bean and another chili bean. I put that in there at the end and then let it go about 20 more minutes simmering and shut it off, let it cool to room temp, put it in the refrigerator, and then warm it up the next day because that chili, it, it's good the first day. It is awesome today Yeah. after those flavors all combine. Even if and that's the easiest it, chili in the world. I can't you win a chili contest with it. I agree. And even if you just let it hang out in the fridge for like a couple hours, yep. you know, before you serve it. You don't have to do nothing else to it. It's got everything it needs. I agree. No more salt, no more pepper, no more doctoring, no more cumin. No it's it's just in there. Sometimes I'll add a little bit of squirt of that um beef concentrate. Ooh. Yeah, that is good. To beef it up just a little bit. Yeah, just a touch. Not a lot, just a what the flavor master? What's that called? Something like that. Uh, kitchen essentials or something. Kitchen assassin. Something like that. Yeah, they do one for like a burger. You got me want some chili now. It's lunchtime. <laughs> I done made a shopping list. Yeah. While <laughs> you're talking. Oh, are you gonna make chili tonight? <laughs> I mean, it's chili weather. It's it really, really good chili. And it's easy. Yeah. You can get fancy. Get you some Fritos, some sour cream, mm -hmm. Frito pie, more cheese. Make you a Frito chili cheese pie. Or yep. what you could do jalapenos. Just some while that while that chili's reheating, throw you a couple big old dogs in there. In the chili. In the chili. That way you fish them out, and they're already got all that chili flavor on them. Yep. Do y'all ever use that leftover chili and make like chili mac? Uh, man, we used to do. I don't leftover chili. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one thing that the pot gets cleaned up. What's on. the chili mac? Uh, it's literally just chili. It's kind of like a chili mac and cheese. So you make the chili, then you just boil you some noodles, add the chili, throw some melted cheese all over the top, bubble it up in the oven. Oh, that's oh, goulash. Oh man, <laughs> top dollar. Yeah, that is a good idea. Oh, you know, oh, that is a good one. You know, we did the barbecue spaghetti. That was a big hit. Mm -hmm. They. Uh, oh, I forgot to talk about barbecue. What spaghetti. do they call it? It's uh, I want to say it's Cincinnati chili with noodles. Yeah, with spaghetti. So it's like spaghetti chili. Wow. You take you take your spaghetti noodles, but but the the chili is is ramped up with like cinnamon. Yeah. That's the one thing that's different in it. It doesn't have. I mean, it's it's chili, but they add cinnamon to it for some reason. It's Cincinnati chili. It's probably a little try. sweeter too. Yeah. yeah. But I bet you could just put barbecue rub in it because we've got the sweetness, and it's got all the chili seasoning, but it's got a little bump of cinnamon in it. But it's not just too like much. The secret ingredient. Yeah. It's enough just to give it. So you could like hit it with that and then top it with chopped onions, maybe a little shredded cheese. We got us a TikTok chili recipe time. <laughs> <laughs> you also have a recipe for it's a chili dog chili and it's a it's just, that's a chili sauce. Yeah, I it's consider. almost like a yeah. chili sauce. 
It's real it's thick. It's really good too, but it's not yeah. like chunky. You don't put beans in that. Mm-mm. You don't put the whole. I, I just like tomato sauce in it. Pretty much, it's yeah. it's perfect to top a dog with. Mm-hmm. Yep. But that chili tops dogs just fine. Chili mac, I could see that being good. We called really, that, really good. Yeah, we called that goulash when I was growing up. Yeah, but it, but you didn't bake goulash. You're talking about you put it in the oven and bake the cheese over the top. So yeah. It's almost like a chili oh, yeah, cheese. Oh, yeah, we didn't do that. It was chili all. Chili cheese macaroni casserole. Because mm-hmm, when you leave it in the fridge overnight, it gets real thick. So it almost comes, it becomes a sauce, you know? Yeah. yeah. And you just mix elbow macaroni in with chili. Yeah. And Have then you top ever, it with cheese. Mm-hmm. Have you ever tried of like, Making mac and cheese and then combining it with the chili. No, but that would probably be really but, good. Yeah, too. yeah, because it's not like you don't make up like the cheese and then the noodles. No, not like a cheese sauce. But I mean, yeah. I, I would assume that would be good. I can't imagine <laughs> that wouldn't be. We could but. do it nacho style, like make you a not a regular cheese sauce, kind of nacho cheesy. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. And then you go noodles, chili, cheese sauce. Like a chili lasagna. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. That's pretty good. I'm down for this. Yeah, I love my Sounds cheese. extra comforty. <laughs> Get the old stretchy pants out for that one. TikTok people are going to love this. I saw a TikTok. I said, Tobacco was like, fat people already thinking about Thanksgiving. It's me. I'm fat, I'm people. fat people. <laughs> <laughs> well, the most magical time of the year. <laughs> Is it your official favorite holiday? It's coming up on it. You don't like to commit. Yeah. Thanksgiving is my favorite. It's your like, favorite. It is, it's it officially is stamped. Stamped. My favorite holiday, Thanksgiving. <laughs> Followed closely by all the mothers. <laughs> Every other one. And so what did you catch me in? You know my second one probably is? Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> yeah. It's not really a holiday, but it is in my book. <laughs> you do kind of treat it like a holiday. It should be. Well, Thank you should you. be off work on Monday. You should have a you know, the Friday off before to get ready. <laughs> I mean, that's a four-day weekend if I've ever seen one. Couldn't they just wrap, like, Columbus Indigenous yeah, Day yeah. all up into Super Bowl Sunday day? Let's just move that one. <laughs> like, I'm sure they don't mind. <laughs> just get it closer to Super Bowl Sunday. That would that doesn't make a lot of sense. And then you can get the Friday and the Monday. Because it's the most unproductive day at work. You yeah. know, the Monday after Super Bowl. Yeah. Everybody calls in. Nobody's working anyway. Nobody's working anyway, yeah. Everybody's, everybody's hurting, usually. Especially if, like, the team you're rooting for loses and, we're and you're hungover. Closed. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, we're officially closed Super Bowl Monday. Super Monday. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good time of year for us to close. It is. Nobody's cooking barbecue. Nobody's cooking barbecue on February 3rd or whatever, it is. <laughs> yeah. whatever day it is. Well, Mel, that's all the time we have today. Man, oh, well, that's a fun one, Shell. Tyler, what else you got? Any other things? No, nah, guys, just watch TikTok this weekend. You guys will see some barbecue egg rolls. We'll talk about that on the next podcast. Oh, yeah. yeah, we'll talk about our TikTok. We did the egg podcast. rolls and we did the cream those the barbecue cream cheese wontons. Mm-hmm. And then a sweet. Have you edited those yet? Uh no. They will I be edited look. by the end of today. Okay. I want to see um, them. That cream cheese barbecue stuffing that you put in those wontons. Oh, we're gonna talk about that. I also did that cherry lime made. Mm-hmm. That was a, that's an excellent drink. <laughs> <laughs> you can't beat it, Jerry Limeade. Yeah, somebody was like, somebody commented on it and said something about like, why not just pour it out and then just add the vodka? Which I mean, you could do that absolutely. But oh, my, yeah, it's, yeah. I but, used to know. So the way to do that is when you go to Sonic, go Route Forty Four, Cherry Limeade, but I only want half. And then you go buy you. <laughs> Pint of vodka, Burnets. and you done Burnett's, <laughs> Burnett. ar- aristocrat, whatever. No, That's know. what I did. Oh yeah, no. One time, me and my buddy Briscoe, we done went and bought. We bought the slush version. We was gonna be fancy. It was daiquiri. Yeah, we both got us like Route Forty Four cherry limeade half slush. No, I think we got one whole one, and then asked for an extra cup. Paid like fifteen cents, and so I'd split them. I'd like pour it half. You know, I'd, he was driving. I poured half the slush in ahead of two, and then we got a whole fifth of vodka. And so I poured, you know, I poured mine up, got it going, poured his up, handed it to him. As soon as I handed it to him, he just like dropped it, and this cherry limeade slush just exploded. We're going down the road now, we're coming route down south. Yeah, Route Forty Four <laughs> cherry limeade slush, half filled with blind <laughs> vodka in it, just everywhere. I don't think y'all were driving. I know we probably weren't driving <laughs> <laughs> in a Grand Am. <laughs> <laughs> Probably listen to Smashing Pumpkins or something. Yeah, rocking. Uh, but yeah, he was pissed because we just scraped enough money to go get that bottle of vodka. We were cheap college. We were poor college. Yeah. Students. We had to go. I think I probably split mine with him. 
See, the key is you get the you, you got to get it all the way full so you have the ice. Then you drink a little bit down so you okay. still have the ice. Then you add because the vodka will melt the ice a little. Oh, you know, that's true. That's true. I, I don't know. This is what I hear. <laughs> <laughs> we had a, a slushy machine at the gas station right beside where we were. Oh where, man, where we though blue and red, it's yeah. blue or red. <laughs> so, <laughs> Heck yeah. Let's go to man, cheap vodka. Or if you really want to get crazy, get the Everclear or Pure Grain PTA. Oh, well, not too. <laughs> you're gonna need like a half half pint of that. Yeah. Y'all seen what Truly's does to me. I don't, I don't know if I need to try any of these. You couldn't have hung out with me. <laughs> Back in the day, Tyler. <laughs> so the hangover did not hurt. <laughs> well, yeah. if you'd like to connect with Malcolm, it's How To BBQ, right? On Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and of course, YouTube. If you'd like to connect with me, it's Miss Southern Shell on Instagram and TikTok. And Tyler? If you guys want to hang out with me, it is <laughs> on Instagram, TikTok, underscore Tyler. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. We'll see y'all next time. We gone. <laughs>